In this video I want to demonstrate how to build structured data for local businesses. This is for everyone who runs a local business anywhere around the globe. Hey and welcome back, nice to have you in the sixth lesson of module 3 of my structured data training. I am Florian, the developer of SNP, the rich snippets and structured data plugin for WordPress. If you want to use the plugin, please feel free to follow the link that you can find in the description area. In this video, I want to show you how a snippet for a local business is built. You hopefully took all the lessons from the previous modules. If not, please jump back to the beginning or to a video where you think you need to refresh your knowledge. In this video, it's important that you have understood what structured data is and what rich snippets are. You need to know how and where you can find the right schema classes as well as their properties to create a snippet for a local business. Let's jump right in. When users search for businesses on Google search or maps, search results might display a prominent knowledge graph card with details about a business that matched the query. In this example, you can see the search result for a restaurant. Google offers a button where it is possible to reserve a table directly on the search results page. Please note that Google is currently piloting this feature with a small set of initial providers. They hope to open up the feature to more providers very soon. As always, we open up the local business page on Google's reference to see how a snippet for local businesses may look like in search results. What you should do and should not do and be really serious about that. If you do violate Google's policies, your mockup might not show up and you risk a penalty with the end result that you maybe never get rich snippets back for your site. And last but not least, what properties are totally necessary and which ones are just recommended. This is the page where you find this document. Look it up, read through and then follow me to the next page. As always, Google uses structured data from schema.org. On schema.org slash local business, you can find all properties that are possible for this schema type. However, as you could see on Google's reference page, you don't need every single property listed there. You only need the required ones to get a real snippet in search results. However, I highly recommend to add as much properties as you can. I will explain later why I recommend this procedure. On schema.org, a local business is child of an organization, which is a thing. If you don't know what I'm talking about right now, please go back to module one of my structured data training. It will be explained in full detail how schema.org is structured. As you can see here, a local business has child schemas that you can also use. Search engines understand that all of them are children of the mother schema, which is in this case the local business. So if you want to use the dentist schema because you think it fits best for your purpose, please feel free to use it. Search engines also have a deep understanding of all the schemas found on schema.org. So they understand exactly that the dentist schema is a local business too. It's interesting that the local business appears twice on schema.org. You can find it again under the place schema. That totally makes sense because a local business is always located in a certain place. When you click on the local business link, the browser will bring you to that specific page of that schema. As you can see, the local business schema and all of its child schemas can have dozens of properties. However, you don't need every single one to get a rich snippet in search results, as I said before. But as always, you can add more if you can fill the properties properly. I'm sure that Google and other search engines will mark more and more properties as mandatory in the future because they did this a lot during the last months. To keep this video as short as possible, I will stick with the recommended ones. All right, let's get started in the video. I will use the built-in generator in SNP, my rich snippets and structured data plugin for WordPress. If you don't have the plugin, please feel free to use the structured data generator on my website to follow the video instructions. The free generator does not have all the features the built-in generator has, so it might be that you get stuck at some point, especially when it comes to global snippets that allow you to automate structured data generation. Let's begin. 
I am logged into my WordPress dashboard now. Let's say I am the owner of a restaurant website. Because we have learned that restaurant is a child schema of local business, I want to add this one to my front page. I have two options now. I can add the snippet to my front page directly, or I use the global snippets functionality and attach the snippet to my front page via the rule set. You may know already how you can add a snippet to a certain post, and that is via these buttons here on the bottom. However, I will go with the latter option, as if in any case I want to use it on another site as well, I can easily change the rule set on the global snippet. As you can see, Snip comes with some pretty fine snippets already. Unfortunately, at this point in time, there is no local business snippet ready for you, so I have to create one on my own. However, that isn't really bad, as it's super easy with the built-in generator. All I have to know is what properties I need to use, and this information can be found, as I told you earlier in this video, on Google's reference page. I have opened up the reference page already. Google tells you exactly what properties are needed, not only for the main schema, which would be the restaurant in my case, but for all sub schemas as well. Um, for example, the business hours. Because every restaurant has opening hours, I'm sure you need this one as well. And Google tells you how, for example, the opening hours specification schema uh, works in different scenarios here, like standard hours, late night hours, all day hours. And don't be frightened about the code you see here. Um, as I told you in my first, first videos, these are only key value pairs. Okay, let's go back to our global snippets and create a new one. I will give it a name. This is just for internal purposes. And I click here the restaurant button. I can also search for restaurant here. This is the same when I click here. And the plugin will intelligently load some properties that are needed for me. Let's start to fill the values. The add ID should be globally unique. And what do we do if we want something globally unique? Of course, we use an URL for this. In this case, I will use the block URL of my restaurant website. The opening specification uh, opening hour specification needs to be a sub schema of the type opening hours specification and this is what snip offers to you here i will configure these sub schemas after i set all the main properties so let's move on quickly with the surf surf's cuisine um, this is just the text of the type of the cuisine that my restaurant serves i will just enter maybe traditional Bavarian yeah the image should be either an URL or a image object there was a time where Google only accepted the image object sub schema but for now it's okay to just enter um, the URL yep and if you want to add a second and a third whatever image you can create multiple image properties snip will merge them together later I will quickly show you how that works image so we have two images here one on top and one at the bottom and I enter yeah maybe the well of a second image here the name of the restaurant is maybe self-explanatory. I will enter here La Bai. Mm, if you are using a rating plugin uh, on your site that allows users to rate your restaurant, you can set up the aggregate rating here. You can find more about this in the documentation of the plugin. I don't use a rating plugin, so I will delete this uh, property 
We will see later that Google Street Snippet test tool will show a warning of a missing field. However, this property is not a required field and it will not prevent my read snippet from showing up in search results. Okay, the menu should be the URL to a site where the menu can be found. I use a URL to a PDF document. You can also use an URL to another page on WordPress where the menu can be found, of course. The address property should inherit the postal address subschema. You can find it here. And as I said before, I will fill all the values that are needed later. I will stick with the main schemas here. The telephone number and the URL down here should be clear too. I will just enter some demo content for the URL. I also used the blog URL. Potential action is the action that a user can perform directly from the search result. Google supports two methods here at this point in time. These are order action and reserve action. I will go with order action. Order action. Okay. If I want your snippet to show a map where your restaurant is located, you need to define the coordinates as well. So in the GEO property, we need the GEO uh, coordinates subschema here. It will then load the longitude and latitude properties. I can add some example data here. All right. Department inherits a local business schema. If you have multiple restaurants with the same name located in different areas, you can set that up here. So I would choose local business and set it up accordingly. Note that you can set up multiple departments by add another department property to the main schema, just like I did it with the image property. Because I don't have any other departments, I will delete this property. Review inherits one or more review subschemas. It only makes sense if your users can rate your restaurant and leave comments. I, as I said before, this is not the case for me, so I will delete the review property as well. Now we can only have one property left, that is the accepts reservations property. In almost all cases, if your restaurant isn't closed, you should set this to true. And there is also a descendant type that you can choose from. And yeah, just select true and you are good to go. Now let's go back to the subschemas we have left over. The first one is the opening hours specification schema. What you need to do here is to basically just choose the days and the opening as well as the closing times. Um, that are basically just three properties and that are day of week, which specifies the day of the week. Opens. and closes. So I would add here, let's say Saturday. So please enter English names here. You can always go back to Google's um, reference and see what properties are possible. Let's say my restaurant is open from nine o'clock in the morning till nine o'clock in the evening. 
So now if your restaurant has more than just one opening hour, you can always add more opening hour specification properties just like we did with the image. So in this case, I would add another opening hour specification. With maybe Sunday. Opens at, let's say 11. And closes. Maybe at six. As I said before, um, if there are two or more um, properties with the same name, they will get merged together later by the plugin. Of course, there is the address property that we need to fill. I think that's that's clear. All right, and then we have our potential action, which is the order action. For the order action, we only need two properties, and that is the delivery method and the price specification. The other ones can be deleted. The delivery method allows two different values that can be found on Google's reference and these are the two values that you can use. I'm just using the first one. All right, and for this price specification, we need the delivery charge specification. And then when we go back and check what we need here, price specification applies to delivery method is only needed if we have chosen the delivery mode own fleet. So we don't need it. The price, let's say, five currency code euros and here we need the transaction volume which is a price specification as well and we also need the price and the price currency yeah here it is okay let's say we say 20 euros so that's it we do deliver to someone if the transaction volume is over 20 euros and it costs five euros for each delivery. All right, I think that's it. Don't forget to save or pub directly publish it. Oh, one thing, we need to choose where this snippet should appear. And I choose page type is the front page. All right, publish. So now we test our front page with uh, Google's structured data test tool. You would enter the URL to your front page here. I need to enter the snippet that the plugin has created manually as I'm on a local development site where this tool has no access to. Okay, I run the test. Now you see that we get 
two errors and when we scroll down we see them um, Google says that applies to delivery method is missing or is required this is because we have defined a price specification but we don't need it if we don't use the delivery method called out here which is here the delivery mode on fleet so what we can do here is basically delete this price specification property altogether because we only offer the pickup service here what's also missing is the target and you cannot find a lot about the target property here on Google's reference page but you can see um, it on the example and uh, you can see that the target property should be the entry point and I guess it's structured like this the URL template is the URL where someone can order directly online in what language and here are the platforms where it's possible to order online so for me it would basically just the desktop web, web platform which means a user can order directly with a like a form or something on my website because I do not have Android or iOS platforms so let's go back to our global snippet search for the order action so we delete this the price specification because we don't need it oops delete and then we add target target which should be the entry point and we need here the action platform and as I just said I only need the web platform and the URL template is the form where someone can order online all right what else we need the in language property as well so let's search for this in language and because it's German I think the E D E is okay all right that's it let's save it and test our snippet again using the structured data test tool again you need to enter your URL here again I need to enter the code snippet all right and now we see we have just one warning as always warnings are not errors they do not prevent your rich snippet from showing up and yeah you can always enter the price range later if you like and if we click click the preview button you can see a quick preview but beware this is not very accurate at this point in time as you can see you don't see any titles or something um yeah it's pretty basic just to give you a clue all right let's sum everything up what we have learned in this video at the time of the making of this video, the local business snippet is only available for those who registered their websites on Google's reference page and only if the application was accepted. A prominent knowledge graph card with details about a business that matched the query will show up in search results if the page was marked up with a local business schema or one of its child schemas. I have explicitly mentioned the dentist schema in this video, but the local business schema has a lot more child schemas that you can also use. To find the right properties, use Google's reference pages to learn more what you should and should not do. Use schema.org to integrate more properties. I totally recommend to use as many properties as possible. If you have multiple stores on different locations, try to automate as much as you can by setting up a global snippet as shown in this video using Snip, My Rich Snippets and Structured Data Plugin for WordPress. In the next video, I will show you how to create breadcrumbs on search results. See you in the next video.